The Cumbrian Bogs Life Project has started the restoration of three lowland raised bogs in the county. It has been working on restoring 507 hectares of this damaged habitat at Roudsey Woods and Mosses, the South Solway Mosses and Bolton Fell Moss. Lowland raised bog is one of the most threatened wildlife habitats in England. It is very important both for biodiversity and for its critical role in carbon storage. The bogs have been drained and then further damaged through becoming overgrown with invasive species such as rhododendron, becoming overgrown with woodland and scrub, and having peat removed by both domestic and commercial peat extraction. We have been using a variety of techniques to deal with these issues. In order to access the bogs, specialist low ground pressure machinery is used. These machines exert less pressure than a human footstep. In the most dried out areas, wide tracked vehicles are able to work on top of the bog surface. However, in wetter areas, it is necessary to use bog mats to prevent the machines from sinking into the bog. Invasive species such as rhododendron colonise peat bogs which have been drained and dried out. This can cause further drying by intercepting rainfall so that it does not reach the bog surface and by taking up bog water through the roots which is then lost through transpiration. The rhododendron are removed using excavators fitted with mechanical flails. This is the most efficient means of clearing the cover and is a first step of restoration. Trees and scrub also colonise peat bogs that have been drained and dried out. Larger trees are felled by hand and removed from sight using tracked, articulated vehicles. Smaller trees and scrub are flailed in a similar manner to rhododendron. Some trees are left on the edge of the bog, or the lag, where the peat bog meets the underlying mineral layer. Where it is commercially viable, the timber is extracted and sold to offset against the cost of felling. Rewetting of vegetated peat surfaces involves blocking drainage ditches and underground cracks using the technique of cell bunding with peat buns. By blocking the drainage of the bogs, the water table is raised back up to the surface. The bunded cells are intended to recreate the wetland ecosystem of the original lowland bog. The cells are about 20 by 20 metres on the flat, or smaller, 10 by 20 or 10 by 10, on areas of sloping ground. As the vegetation within each of the bunded cells grows, it will rise up over the buns and join together. To create a peat bund, excavators dig trenches up to two metres deep in the bog to ensure that any drainage ditches and cracks are intercepted. The excavators dig borrow pits in order to use the fresh wet peat taken from them, which they then squish down into the trenches to block the flow of water from the cracks and drains. A small bund about 10 centimetres above ground surface is then formed using the good peat, which is then capped with vegetated material taken from the top of the trench. These bunded cells create shallow water pools that re-wet the dried peat surfaces. In areas where rhododendron has been flailed, the buns are made slightly higher to drown out the stumps and prevent regrowth. Any new growth that occurs is sprayed. Where peat extraction has left steep cut peat faces, these have to be reprofiled to shallower 30 degree banks to prevent further cracking on the higher bog surface. Contour buns are created at the top and the bottom of the slope 
to hold water and intercept any cracks that could become drainage channels. The results of cell bonding can be seen most clearly from the air as a pattern in the landscape. In time, as the bog vegetation regrows across the re-wetted area, it will spread out again, becoming a functioning bog. Large areas of milled peat involve particular restoration challenges, as peat that has been completely dried out has lost its ability to hold water and cannot easily be re-wetted. Bare peat gets extremely hot in the summer and suffers from frost heave in the winter making it difficult for plants to colonise. We have worked closely with our contractors to develop new techniques to restore this type of landscape. The first step in the restoration process is to create a series of low, horseshoe-shaped bundled cells across the infield ditches to hold water and keep the surface of the bog saturated. A variety of hummocks and hollows are created to maximise the niches available for different bog species to take hold and re-establish. Swales, shallow channels with gently sloping sides, are created to help manage water levels by removing any excess water from lower lying areas of the bog. Bog plant species are harvested from donor sites. These include sphagnum species, moorland grasses and pleurocarpus mosses. These are collected and mixed together in dumpy bags before they are ready for spreading. This mixed sphagnum mulch or living carpet is then spread across the bare peat using specialised extra wide track machinery that is specially adapted for the boggy conditions. The grasses and the pleurocarpus mosses provide a nurse crop for the sphagnum mosses to become established on the damp, bare peat. This process of bog formation is called paludification. Finally, we need to control the water levels by blocking the principal drainage ditches and adding water level control mechanisms. The techniques that have been developed with our contractors are just the starting point of the restoration of the lowland raised bogs. We will now have to carefully manage the water levels at the three sites to ensure that they are right for bog vegetation to re-establish at the surface. There should be a good cover after five years, however it is anticipated that it will take at least 30 years for all the ecological functions of our lowland bogs to return.